So, I mean, I think 2015 is actually quite an exciting year for Child TV. I think, as you've just said, over the last 10 years we've managed to get more attention, more people thinking about it, much, much more attention from the national programs. Why is 2015 an important year? Probably because we're getting innovations such as a new fixed dose combination for children which will be available at the end of this year. But I think more importantly than that is the um, fact that the post-2015 post NTB strategy um, involves uh, approaches that will include children a lot more. Um, Community-based, family-based screening, preventive therapy, operational research, working with other health sectors, most particularly maternal and child health. Because I think, uh, and we've, we've now got a task force for the WHO Western Pacific region, we've got a task force for the WHO Afro region on child TB. Um, and what this is doing is bringing people from the maternal and child health sectors with together with the national TB programs to form the child TB working groups at regional and national level um, that will then work together to start giving more attention to TB in children. That's, that's, that's important, that's, the f that's what's happening, there's more and more work being done on TB in children. The main issue that is a challenge that remains is that of diagnosis. Um, there's still many people in the regions who don't have the confidence to make a diagnosis of TB in a child because it's usually a clinical diagnosis. But we are also developing new tools to help with that. And I think one of the nice ones is, is the online training for health workers which the union has produced, which is a lovely freely available online training for health workers at primary and secondary care facilities um, which people are now starting to utilise and we're developing facilitator guides to help with that and we're also now in the process of developing online training for drug resistant TB in children. So all of these things are um, I think moving things in the right direction. Uh, as you can see, I have a lot more to say now about child TB than I would have been able to say five years ago. So. I, mean, I think we still will have this issue of trying to find TB amongst the pneumonia, the malnutrition. I think there needs to be more work done, and I think it needs, you know, it, it has to be done by, as I say, the child health sector. Um, they're the ones who look after the children. That's where the children present to the child health sector. Um, we have to encourage. Hopefully as we start getting more diagnostics, so it, it, you know, um, better, better diagnostics, oh, expert, expert ultra, which will be coming available, more sensitive ways of picking it up. People will start to do these studies more um, to tr in the malnutrition wards, in the pneumonia wards, to try and get a better handle on the, the child TB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And better reporting also. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I know from the field that there are many, many more kids actually already being diagnosed and treated for TB but are just never reported to the program. And if we don't have the data of how many kids are being treated for TB, how can we advocate effectively? How can we know how much drugs we need, how much drugs we need to procure? You know, um, w what's the direction of, of control in children? So we definitely need much better data. I mean, I think, I, think, I think we've gone to sleep a bit on asthma in children in resource limited settings because there was a prevalence studies done with the union did with others called the ISAAC studies and there's nothing really ever been done since. Um, and, you know, my experience is that, okay, asthma may not be as common in Indonesia or Vietnam as it is in Australia, for example, but those children who have asthma, they have problems getting decent, decent treatment. So we know for a fact that deaths due to asthma are much more common in resource limited settings, as you'd expect, because they can't get onto inhaled steroids or preventive therapy or any of these things. Asthma remains a very important neglected NCD in, in children and adolescents. In, in, in the world, there's no doubt about that. Um, 
but there's not a lot of overlap, except for the fact that it's neglected. There's not a lot of overlap between the asthma and the tuberculosis. Yeah. This has happened in Australia, it's happened in New Zealand. As the population gets, um, particularly with socioeconomic development, and children have less of the infectious diseases, and they have better nutrition, they often end up having higher prevalences of asthma. It, should, it shouldn't be too difficult to put together more standardised guidelines because the, the approach to treatment can be fairly simple. The problem is, is availability of the medications at low cost. I mean, I'm sure you can buy um, inhaled steroids preventive therapy quite in Indonesia or Vietnam, for example, but I'm sure for a poor family, the cost would be quite substantial because this is a treatment you have to keep taking all the time you have to keep buying more and more yeah, yeah.